Coming up on Saturday, March 2nd, Republicans around the state are going to gather at different locations, 210 of them, to choose the presidential candidate that's coming up in the GOP presidential caucus. And according to the Idaho Republican Caucus website, you can participate in that caucus if you've been a registered Republican since January 1st of this year, 2024, or if you turn 18 between January 1st and the date of the presidential caucus and you register as a Republican. So if you meet these criteria, well, then you probably received a Republican caucus card in the mail that has your caucus location on it. But apparently some of those were not correct. Alice Jenkins texted us saying she got a card in the mail and said her caucus location, Maple Grove Elementary. Republican caucus website, though, says it's Bora High School. Could you please ask if you're getting conflicting information? Which is correct with this? Alice wants to know. We reached out to the Republican Party. And they told us, yep, they were made aware over the weekend a small number of postcards were identified with the wrong caucus address. They've been addressed, again, literally and figuratively, and new postcards are already dispatched to those voters. They said if you can uh, find your caucus as well on location, on their location, I should say, at IdahoRepublicanCaucus.com, which is where Alice also went. We also noticed the card says this part on it. Keep this card and bring it with you to the caucus. So that got us thinking, do you need that card to vote? The answer is no. GOP told us voters are not required to bring that postcard with them, but they do suggest you do bring it so you kind of know where you're going, have the precinct at your fingertips. All you do need to vote in the caucus is a photo ID. Again, that caucus coming up less than two weeks, Saturday, March 2nd. All right, we're also about two and a half weeks away from everyone's favorite springtime reminder. Spring forward, March 10th, a vast majority of the United States and all of Idaho goes into daylight saving time. What is now, what, 515 will be 615 on March 10th. And for those who set their alarms on Sundays, well, they're going to lose an hour of sleep, but our sunsets are going to be later. Every year, it seems we get the same question posed. Why can't we just eliminate this daylight saving time thing altogether? True to form, Bud in Boise sent in this text message yesterday. I saw something about our legislators passing an approval to eliminate daylight saving time. Was I mistaken or is this going to happen? Well, you're not mistaken, bud. Last week, Republican Representative Joe Alfieri introduced House Bill 584, which would eliminate the snip snap, snip snap of daylight saving time and keep Idaho on the standard time permanently. The bill's currently in the House State Affairs Committee and awaiting uh, a hearing, I guess. Is it going to happen? Well, the other question, can Idaho just do that? Yes, we can. The Federal Uniform Time Act of 1966 allows states to opt out of daylight saving time, but not the other way around. However, there has been a push to make the entire country observe daylight saving time all the time. There was a bill passed in the U.S. Senate in 2022 that stalled in the House. Another attempt made last year, the Sunshine Protection Act of 2023. Nothing has happened with that yet, and it would require the House to agree to it. The president would have to sign it in order for it to take effect. By the way, California, they passed Prop 7 in 2018 to opt out of DST. So why not, Idaho? Why don't we just follow California's lead? We love doing that, right?